Okay, welcome. This is Microsoft Publisher Lesson 1. And in this exercise, we're going to look at exercises 3 through 5. And in these exercises, we're going to try to cover how to select, resize, move, and delete an object, as well as how to place a new text box in a publication, how to turn on our auto fit, how to insert a symbol and check our spelling, and then we'll look at how to select text and how to move and copy that text, how we can delete our text, and how we can use our undo and redo commands. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start a new file. Uh, first thing you're going to need to do is open up public, uh, Microsoft Publisher if you haven't already done so. And we're going to come over here. We're going to click on Open. And we're going to come and we're going to search for PUB03. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And click on open. There we go. The first thing we, you want to do again whenever you start a new file is you want to go ahead and save this file. So I'm going to click on file, save as. And I'm going to save this as... 03 GEO underscore and then you're going to put your two initials. So the first thing it wants us to do in the instructions is it wants us to select this yellow background that we have here and to delete it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on just click on the uh, yellow background here and on your keyboard I'm just going to hit my delete key and notice that when we hit our delete key we can kind of see these imaginary uh, well you can see these dotted blue lines uh, this is where our page is going to end as far as the margins are concerned and our printing is uh, going to be set up so what we want to do is we want to take these objects right here and I'm just going to select this top I'm going to I'm going to say that's a bluish green line and I'm going to use my arrow key on my keyboard and I'm going to uh, press my up arrow so that it's starting to touch right here on that border line there. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. I'm just going to select it and use my down arrow to move my line down. I'm going to select this line on the left and I'm going to move it over to the left a little bit more. I'm going to select the line on the right, use my right arrow and move the line to the right some just to kind of make this area right here a little bit bigger. Uh, we want to make sure that our lines are still overlapping some. Uh, it looks like I'm okay here. And then we want to continue with our exercises that says to uh, our instructions, I'm sorry, uh, to use our rotation handles to try to straighten these lines up. If you'll notice, uh, these lines are kind of, they're not straight. So we're going to use this rotation handle right here. And I'm just going to click and drag and try to straighten that up. Now I kind of went the wrong way there. And this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, just kind of take your time and see if you can get a, a good movement on it so that uh, we can straighten up these lines here. I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom here. Kind of straighten those up. And again, if, if you need to move your lines over to the left, right, or up or down, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, but those look pretty straight so I'm going to go ahead and leave that the, the way it is. I'm going to go now the uh, next set of instruction wants us to select this top text block or text object. Uh, I'm going to select that. I'm going to go ahead and hit my delete key and then it wants us to resize and position this text block here or text object down towards the bottom so I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move that down so the lines are touching down here. I'm going to pull this to the right. I'm going to pull this 
sizing handle. These are sizing handles, by the way. Uh, I'm going to click on the sizing handle, pull to the left, and I'm going to grab this sizing handle here, and I'm going to drag it down just a little bit here. And that looks about what I want there. So that right there, if we were following the instructions in our in our book, would have us finish exercise three. We're going to continue working on this, and we're going to move on to now to exercise four. And here, the first thing that we want to do is we want to add a text box up here at the top of our flyer. Uh, remember in the last uh, video, I said when you have an object in your publication selected, you're going to get these contextual tabs up here. Uh, so we're going to we're going to go to those in just a second. But right now, what I want to do is I want to create a text box right here. So I'm just going to go to my home tab here where it says draw a text box. And I'm going to start in this upper corner. Now if you notice over here on the left, I have rulers that kind of help guide me where I'm at in my publication. Now it looks like when I when I start right here, I'm on about one and three eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag down. I'm going to go ahead and move to two and three eighths. That'll give me the inch that I want. And I'm going to release my mouse. Now, right here, notice that my text is really small. And that, that's okay for right now. The text I want to put in here is called Discover Geology. And I'm going to put an exclamation point on there. Now, what I can do to make this fit all the way across and know that I got a, a good fit is up here in my ribbon I've in the, on the far left I've got a button right here that says text fit and I want to click right here where it says best fit and that's going to increase my font large enough so that it fits real well inside the text box itself now the other thing I want to look at is the alignment right now my alignment says that my text is in the upper left hand corner I'm going to go ahead and click right here, Align Center. That's going to align it horizontally and vertically within that text box. Uh, and by, by doing so, we're going to go ahead and create another text box. So I'm going to go back to my home, home tab. I'm going to draw another text box. And I'm going to start just right below Discover Geology. And I'm going to draw me another text box right here. And again, I'm going to go ahead and type in, or I'm going to select best fit. Now, when I type in best fit for right now, notice that my cursor is taking up the whole box because it right now it doesn't know what I'm going to type in. Uh, if you have your set of directions, it'll, this might make it a lot easier for you to see what's being uh, keyed in. But um, if you look at illustration A, I'm going to go ahead and key in what's in that text box right there. Uh, so just you know, take your time, get the text keyed in, and then uh, I'll meet you at the next set of instructions when you get them uh, when you get the text keyed in. Okay, so I have the text keyed in. Uh, hopefully you do too at this point. Um, right after the cool rocks right here, uh, because that's supposedly a name of a, a radio station, we're going to insert a symbol, a registered trademark symbol. And the way you do that is you're going to come up here to your, your tabs and we're going to click on our insert tab. And over here under text, or in our text group I should say, we have a symbol button, and if we click on this drop-down arrow, notice that we have some symbols right here. 
Well, I don't see the registered trademark symbol that I need right here. So I'm going to click on more symbols. And this is going to give me a chance to just kind of scroll through what I do have. And I'm looking for the registered trademark symbol. So I'm going to click on that and click on insert and close. And you'll now see that I have a registered trademark right there. Uh, you can also create uh, a registered trademark symbol uh, simply by clicking or typing in a, a left parentheses, a lowercase r, and then a right parentheses, and then hitting it, uh, your space bar. Notice that I've got a, another registered trademark there. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't want that there. Just wanted to show you that you can uh, insert that simply by typing. Now, while I was typing in my text, I made a couple of mistakes and I should have just left them so I can see, uh, so I can show you uh, how you can correct uh, your spelling errors. I'm going to go back and, and insert uh, an I right there where I, I misspell expedition. Now there's two ways that we can go through and, and we can change this. One is I can just right click over the word itself and notice that I've got some options right here that I can choose or I can come up here to uh, review and I've got a spell check right here. And notice that when I use the spell check, it'll find the word that it thinks is wrong and give me a suggestion to change that too. And I can either ignore it, ignore it, ignore it because that's not what I want, or I can change it. If I've made the mistake several times in the document, I can change all of them, or I can ignore all of them if that's the way I really wanted to, to spell it. So in this case, I want to go ahead and change that. I'm going to click on change. Um, it's saying that rocks is wrong. I'm, that's one I'm going to ignore because I know that's the way I want it spelled. And it's going to tell me that I'm finished. Do I want to check the rest of my publication? I'm going to say no for right now. And it's just letting me know that the spell check is complete. Now, once we have all this keyed in, uh, that takes us to the end of exercise four. So now we've got one more exercise that we're going to uh, look at. And that's exercise five. And we're just going to look at some of the other things that you can do as far as editing your text uh, within your publication. So if you're having some problems looking at your document or seeing your document, again, don't forget, if you come over here to view, you can zoom in uh, to your text. Uh, so I'm going to zoom into 75% so I can see my text a little bit better. And now we're just going to look at some editing functions here. So let's take the discovery expeditions for just a second here, and I'm going to highlight that. Now you want to be careful that when you highlight, you don't get that extra little space there at the end. And this, again, this can be kind of tricky. And I'm still getting it. And my mouse is not uh, cooperating with me. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that extra space right there. Uh, one of the things you can do, uh, well, we won't, need, we won't worry about that. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And I'm going to change this to camping trips. And you'll see the, the problem that it causes in just a second when you grab that extra little piece. Now what I want to do is I want to select fossil wraps. And again, here's where we might have a little bit of trouble. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and leave it again so you can see the problem that it causes. What I want to do is I want to copy this. So I'm just going to hit control C on my keyboard. And now what I want to do is I want to hit enter and create a new line here. And I'm going to do control V to paste. Now notice that when I pasted, it added an extra line. That's what happens when you when you grab that extra little piece there at the end of the, the word there that I didn't want. I'm just going to hit backspace there uh, just to kind of delete that extra line there. 
And I'm going to change this second fossil wrap to jewelry making workshops. Okay, now let's just say for whatever reason, and I know this, this seems a little bit redundant, but uh, let's just say for whatever reason, I didn't want those changes that I just made. Well, if you look up here at the top of your, your uh, window here, you've got an undo text editing. By clicking on that, I can undo the last command that I issued. So let's just undo all the way until we get back to discovering uh, expeditions. So there's my discovery expeditions. So I went ahead and, and hit my undo button uh, until I got back to where I was. Now let's reverse that process. Let's say I wanted to go back. I could use the redo button and I'm going to redo my text editing until I get back to the jewelry making workshops. So again, this is just one way you can kind of see how, you know, you can kind of edit your document. Again, if you make a, a mistake and you're like, oh my gosh, I lost all my information. If you just hit your undo button, That'll usually take you back to, to where you were uh, when, when you issued your last command. So the last thing that we want to do uh, on this document is we want to take what we have right here. Uh, we want to take these lines and we want to place them in alphabetical order. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select each line. You can either cut and paste. In this case, I'm just going to select my line. I'm going to click and drag and move it where I want. I'm going to select the camping trips, uh, fossil swaps, jewelry making. And now I've got everything in order. Last step I want to do is I want to click on file. I want to save this as an Adobe PDF. It's asking me, do I want to save my file first? Yes, I do. I'm going to save this. Uh, after I save it, it's going to create this Adobe PDF file. And again, this is what you're going to turn in. You can raise your hand, show your instructor, and then turn what you have into Google Classroom.